um, Audrey get started. So, um, welcome everyone. So, my name is Sam Harlow. I'm the online learning librarian as well as the kinesiology, public health education, and community and therapeutic recreation librarian for UNCG University Libraries. So, a couple of years ago now, this is I think our third or fourth year, what is time, we created a series of webinars for the UNCG community on online learning and innovation. So in this series, different UNCG instructional technology consultants, ITS staff, and faculty will cover topics on online learning pedagogies, UNCG instructional technology tools, such as Canvas, Google, Box, um, our video platforms, and more. These 30-minute webinars will be recorded in Zoom and placed on the library webpage that I'm about to drop in the chat. So if you signed up for this or know somebody who signed up for this and can't be here, you will also get a follow up email um, about a day or so after this recording um, about with the recording link. The page I'm about to drop in the chat will also um, contain other things like presentation materials, slides, links, etc. Um, so there it is. Um, so um, we also give a, fi a recording file to the person recording the materials where they can put it where they see fit. So just a couple of logistical things about how this uh, webcast is going to run before Audrey gets started. You are muted upon entry and please remain muted while the presenter is talking, but feel free to turn your audio back on um, by clicking the audio icon next to your name or at the bottom of your screen at the end of the webinar to participate in a conversation with presenters. Uh, you might be in full screen mode right now. You're welcome to push escape um, and then you can uh, then better access the chat and see the other participants. If you have any technical issues during the webinar, please feel free to email or gchat me. I'm going to be on mute moderating the chat in the background um, while Audrey is presenting. So are there any questions before um, I introduce Audrey? Okay. So today's session is hosted by Audrey Brickley, the ITS learning and ITS learning technologies instructional technology consultant. She will be talking about video platform options at UNCG, as you see on your screen, um, her information as well. So I'm going to mute myself and turn my video off. And thank you, Audrey. Thank you, Sam. Yeah, I'm so excited to be talking to you guys today. And I always like to start just by saying how truly fortunate we are here at UNCG to have so many options. And I know that it can be overwhelming to select and learn the tools, but um, I have lots of friends who teach at other institutions and they're always so surprised to hear everything that we use and support here at UNCG. And so many of them are just kind of scrambling right now to make do. So we not only have what we need, but we have choices to support a great variety of different uses. So I just always like to start there. Um, and before I start describing those four options, I did just want to quickly let you know why I haven't included um, WebEx as one of our platforms for this webinar. Um, and although you can continue using it through the end of the semester, um, we will no longer have it starting in the spring. So now is a great time to start exploring your other options if you normally prefer WebEx. Okay, so looking at the platforms we do have, probably um, the question I get most frequently these days is just which one should I use? And that really depends on what you're trying to accomplish. But what I've done for today is I've given a lot of thought and devised kind of an elevator pitch for each one to give you kind of the big picture for each. So just like if I ran into you in the elevator and you wanted to know the options, what would I say about each? So our first is Zoom, and you probably all are very familiar with Zoom by now. We're in it right now. <laughs> but my elevator pitch is that Zoom provides real-time interaction for up to 300 people, and it's integrated with Canvas. And that means you can interact with your students in real time, no matter where they are. Um, you could see them if they chose to turn on their camera. They can raise their virtual hand to ask a question or add to the chat. You can share your slides or anything you want to show them on their on your computer, such as Canvas or your syllabus or the library's web page. You can schedule your meetings right from in Canvas um, and that automatically gives your students access to join. Um, and you can record your sessions and make them available to students right here in Canvas also. And I did want to point out that Zoom is a classroom tool. Um, it's not just for fully online classes. 
So if you want to or, or um, have to have students join from outside the classroom for any reason, you can use Zoom to bring them in using the same equipment that was added to classrooms for Panopto, um, including the dot cam. You can use that with Zoom. Um, and you can also have students rename themselves in Zoom to maintain their privacy, which could become important, um, you know, like let's say they were um, joining from home because they were quarantined and you want to maintain their privacy. So next we have Google Meet and my elevator pitch for Meet is that it provides real-time interaction for smaller groups and it's integrated with Gmail and Google Chat. And this makes it a great tool for kind of quick on the fly interaction. So let's say you're emailing back and forth or chatting online with a student or colleague. Um, you can say, hey, do you, do you wanna hop on Meet? And it's right there, like one click. Um, Google Meet is not integrated with Canvas though. And so, and recordings are added to your Google Drive. So it's not that same seamless experience in Canvas for your students like we get with um, Zoom for your class meetings but it can be used as a backup in the rare, rare case that Zoom goes down, <laughs> which we all experienced on Monday morning. Um, and my understanding is that Meet will technically allow up to 205, um, 250 participants, but it does work better with smaller groups. Okay, so let's look at Panopto, and this is our newest platform. And you probably have heard something along the lines of like, our classrooms are being outfitted with Panopto, but Panopto is just software, just like our other video platforms. There's no physical component to Panopto. Um, our classrooms were outfitted with cameras and microphones, which can be used with Panopto or Zoom. So whichever tool you prefer, um, they weren't necessarily outfitted for Panopto. So my elevator pitch for Panopto is that it's a great lecture capture tool, which is really like TV broadcast from your classroom. Um, and it does have great student features on recordings, but the live experience is not interactive like Zoom. Um, it's more one way, one to many. And I do mean many, <laughs> Panopto is essentially limitless. Um, you can have thousands of people join. You can record for hours on end and we have unlimited storage there. Um, but you can speak to your students, but students joining from outside the classroom can't like unmute themselves, um, like you guys might at the end of the session here to ask a question. Um, there's a delay, so it runs about 40 seconds behind. So I really have come to think of it almost like watching the news at home. <laughs> it's kind of live, but I can't like raise my hand and ask a question. Um, and that can be a good fit if your classroom experience is generally like more passive for students. So if you have an auditorium full of students and you mostly lecture during class time, Panopto will capture and broadcast that and create a recording of it. And even if you don't have anyone joining from home, you can use it to simply record what happens in the front of your classroom and make that available to your students afterward. And here's where Panopto really shines. Um, the student features on recordings are really special. And the biggest one for me is the search feature. So um, when you record with Panopto, it scans the content of your video, all the content everything that's said and everything that's shown on your screen, and it makes all of that content searchable. So in my pretend example here where I'm teaching um, a culinary course about bread, if I recorded everything that happened in my classroom all semester and a student, you know, kind of sitting at home working in the class said, what was it that she said about needing go? My student can search for that and get a list of every time that was mentioned in any of the videos in the course folder, which is really amazing. Um, and then from within a video, they can also search the content from within that one video, as well as add bookmarks, um, notes for themselves. They can add a comment that everyone else in the class can see at a specific timestamp in the video. And Panopto does make captioning pretty easy. So um, when it scans that video content, it does create a caption file that you can then add to your video and edit as necessary to achieve that 99% accuracy that we need for accessibility. And of course, um, that will be more work in certain disciplines more than others. For instance, if you have a lot of scientific terms or you're teaching a foreign language, um, it doesn't get proper names right very often. So this is really automatic machine captioning and it does have limits. 
but the process of editing the captions themselves is very easy. Um, and another great feature that Panopto has is that you can add quizzes to the video throughout the video on the timeline. And this does integrate with the Canvas gradebook. Um, and Panopto does allow you to record multiple sources at once. So you can include um, the classroom webcam, your slides, the doc cam, you can share your screen, whatever's happening on your computer, and you can set this all up at the beginning of class rather than having to kind of stop and switch what you're sharing throughout. And this is different from Zoom where you're controlling at any given moment what students see. Panopto captures all of the sources at once um, in the one recording and then students control their view, kind of like what they're looking at, what source they're looking at. They can decide um, which source to view where, they can make one source the only thing they see. So that's really um, kind of unique in Panopto. And then before I move on to studio, um, I do want to just mention my secret weapon, which is that we actually have a Panopto Zoom integration. And I love this because it really allows you to use Zoom in the classroom to have that great interactive um, experience where students are actively engaging in real time, while also providing those great student features that we talked about with Panopto, the search, the notes, um, the discussion, the captions, all of that. And it's really easy to make this happen. So all you have to do is add both Zoom and Panopto video to your course navigation in Canvas, and then schedule your Zoom sessions in Canvas, um, in your Canvas course from that Zoom link. As long as you're scheduling from that Zoom link, when you record to the cloud, those recordings will automatically be added to Panopto. So it'll automatically scan um, your recordings so they're searchable without you doing anything at all. And students could then just go there to Panopto video in your course to watch your Zoom sessions. Um, but again, you know, with the captions, I just want to point out that it automatically creates that caption file, but you do need to add it. You have to go in and add it to your video, um, which is just a few clicks, but you do want to edit them for accuracy, which is why I think um, they don't add it automatically. They don't want to add inaccurate captions. They want to give you a chance to edit them for that accuracy before they become available to students. So that won't be automatic, that part. Um, but we know that one little mistake in those machine captions can completely change the meaning of what's being said, and we don't want to let that happen. Okay, so now looking at Studio, my elevator pitch for Studio is that you can create brilliant videos from your office for students to watch on their own time. And you can also assign video projects to students with Studio. And what really sets Studio apart is that it's a great tool for asynchronous learning. So if you're teaching fully online or you use a flipped classroom approach, um, Studio is such a great tool for you. You can record anything on your screen or your webcam, or you can combine the two for a video that's really engaging for your students. And research does show that including your webcam along with your slides really does um, increase engagement. So you can see here in my example, um, that I'm recording my screen. And in this case, it's my syllabus in Canvas and also my webcam where I'm speaking to my students about it. So that's a great use of Studio. Um, or you could create mini lectures that are chunked for your students to watch. And this is where <laughs> I like to point out that students are more likely to watch and pay attention to shorter videos <laughs> than longer ones. So we wanna limit those to maybe seven to 15 minutes. Um, and, and you work really hard to create these videos and we wanna make sure our students are actually watching them. So this is a really great practice. And, and then you can also see in my example here, this comment below. So just like Panopto, Studio allows comments um, that everyone will see. So in this example, um, students could ask me questions about the syllabus at the point in the video where I'm talking about what you know she has a question about. And then um, you can see the little subscribe to comments button here. So I'll be alerted if my students do comment on my video and then I can pop in and reply to their question. And then all of the students who watch the video after that will have access to that interaction, which really emulates something that happens naturally in the classroom. 
Um, and you can also have Studio, you can use it in an assignment as a, a submission type. So you can use it to have students create and submit videos. And um, the comment feature can be so helpful here as well for that targeted feedback. So I was working with someone from dance this summer who teaches yoga and she's teaching it online this semester. And she's having them actually record videos of them doing the poses and submitting them with Studio. And then using that commenting feature to provide feedback at specific points in the video, which is amazing that we can do this. Um, and students can also use this to record presentations or even just simple videos where they're introducing themselves to you and each other. And just like Panopto, you can add quizzes to the video timeline. And this does also integrate with the Canvas gradebook. And this is another way you can have students actively engage with your video content. And it's such a great um, metacognitive activity um, where students are watching and then checking in, am I getting this? And it also gives you an opportunity um, to indicate what is most important from your lecture as you're kind of adding those questions throughout. And you can also do this with YouTube videos in Studio. So you can see here in my example, this is a video I pulled from YouTube and added questions to. And you can also hide these question markers. I have them showing here for, for the sake of my demonstration, but you can hide these from students. You get that choice when you're creating the quiz. And then finally, um, with Studio, one of the things that really makes it unique among our video platforms is these great editing features. You can add highlights, um, text, images. You can even add additional videos. Um, you can, you can um, trim from the beginning or end, and you can cut out little mistakes that you made. You can speed up or slow down what's happening on the screen. And none of our other video platforms really have anything like this. So this is really special. But um, one thing to note is that Studio doesn't kind of like save your progress. You can't start editing and then go back to it a few days later to continue. So you need a plan to record and edit in one sitting and then upload your studio video right away, which is a limitation. Um, but I like to think of it kind of as encouraging um, that great instructional design practice of keeping videos kind of short. And um, Studio does also include that same automatic captioning feature as Panopto and that same easy method of quickly editing for accuracy. Okay. So that's the tools. Um, and now I just very quickly want to run through some of the features that I have found that are most important to our faculty at UNCG when they're deciding on a platform. And I've mentioned some of these things throughout, but this will give you a chance to kind of compare them more directly because there might be features or limitations that make you quickly choose or um, rule out one tool or the other. So hopefully this is helpful. And the, the first one is that Canvas integration, which is so important to so many of our faculty. If it's not in Canvas, they don't wanna use it. <laughs> and I completely understand that. So Meet is the only one of these tools that's not integrated with Canvas. And then the next one that's a big one for making this decision, will my video be streamed, broadcast, webcast, however you like to say it, live. And for real-time streaming, Zoom and Meet are the only ones that do that. Panopto has that slight delay, about 40 seconds, and Studio is completely asynchronous. You would not use it to stream what's happening in your classroom to students or anything like that. Um, and then I had a hard time <laughs> with deciding how to kind of characterize this one, but I think what it really comes down to is that verbal interaction that comes with true video conferencing tools. So I added these visuals at the bottom to kind of help you remember. Um, you can have real time back and forth conversation in Zoom and Meet. Um, this is not a thing in Panopto or Studio. That's that they have that one to many experience, more like watching TV than being a part of any kind of interactive experience. <clears throat> Panopto does, um, it does have like a very basic message feature where students can type in a comment or a question, but you have to remember that it does have that 40 second delay. Um, so by the time the student listens to what you said, formulates their question and then types it, by the time you see it, it's been a couple minutes and you've probably moved on. So it can make that kind of inefficient or awkward. And so if you do need students to be able to raise their hand or unmute themselves or contribute in any way in real time, you really wanna go um, 
with Zoom. And then quizzing. So this is where we flip flop from that last feature. <laughs> we can't verbally interact in real time, but we can have students meaningfully engage with the video content we've created with Studio and Panopto with the quizzing feature. And the question types are basic in both tools. So um, multiple choice, true and false, that kind of stuff. Panopto does have one additional one from Studio, which is matching, but neither of them have any kind of short answer or essay questions at all. Um, and then analytics. So if you want to keep an eye on who's watching your videos or if they're being watched all the way through. So you can see in my two examples here, um, one from Studio and one from Panopto. Um, how viewing is strong in the beginning of the video, but then kind of drops off. So you can use this information in a variety of ways um, to inform how you create future videos or to determine if a, a specific student um, who asks a question about the syllabus, for example, like really did watch your video when you went over that. Um, and then in Zoom and Meet, it's very basic. So you can kind of tell who was there during your session, but it's not going to give you all that data and insight to work with like Studio and Panopto does. Um, but keep in mind that features Features in these platforms are always changing. So when it comes to analytics or anything else, um, this is not set in stone. They're always making improvements. So you just want to keep that in mind. Um, you may not need to rule out one of these things forever. And so then, um, although Studio is really our primary tool that's specifically made to create videos that students watch on their own time, for asynchronous learning or flipped classes, there's really no reason you couldn't use any of the other tools to create recordings to add to Canvas for students to watch whenever they want. You don't have to add anyone to sessions in Zoom or Meet or Panopto. You can just open it up, share your screen, and start recording, um, and then just share that resulting recording with your students. So if you're more comfortable in one of these tools over the other, if you already know how to use Zoom and you love it to share your slides or whatever, you certainly can just use that to create recordings that then you then share with your students. And then finally, video editing, like I said, um, Studio has those robust editing features, but Panopto and Zoom really only offer trimming. So um, Meet just puts a copy of your recording into your Google Drive, but with any of these tools, you can always just download the video that you created and use the video editing of, um, tool of your choice if that's something that you do. And then finally, some best practices I just wanted to quickly mention. Um, when you're recording from the classroom, you want to repeat, repeat questions from students in the classroom for the benefit of people watching online. So in the vast majority of classrooms, the audio is really only going to capture the front of the classroom. So where you're standing, maybe one or two students in the front row or something like that. Um, so if a student in the back of the classroom asks a question, you don't just want to say yes and then move on because the students at home won't know what you're talking about. And this is something you really have to practice <laughs> because it does not come naturally as I've learned from doing this. Um, and then this is an important one. If you have a video of a lecture that you really just love that you captured with Panopto or whatever, but you can see students and identify them in the video, you can't keep using that semester after semester. And there is a letter um, from the general counsel about this that you can read on keepteaching.uncg.edu if you miss that. And then of course, accessibility. We all know about captions and that's so essential for your videos, but there are other barriers that can affect students with other kinds of disabilities. So for instance, um, students with visual disabilities, and I think um, a lot of people kind of forget about this. So especially right now, it's like a big trend to include kind of open captions on videos with just music as the background. So we're hearing music and we're seeing words on the screen to give the video's message, like in my example here. But what if you can't see the video? Um, how can you access that content? You can't. <laughs> if they had a narrator in addition to the open captions, that information would be accessible to people who are playing the video um, and who can hear it but can't see it. So I always like to suggest creating a video and then watching it um, 
two times, okay? The first time with no sound and just reading the captions. Does everything make sense? And then the second time with no visual, just listen to your video, turn your chair around or whatever, um, listen to it. Are you getting the full message of the video? And as a, as a best practice, you want to articulate all of the information. So if you're showing students what to click in Canvas, you want to say what you're clicking. Click Zoom, not just click here, because that's not going to mean anything to the person who can't see what you're clicking. Um, and then finally, if you remember only one thing from this session, let it be this. Um, perfectionism is the enemy of progress. Your students don't need professionally produced flashy videos. They just need you. You're the most important thing in your class. And the only thing that any of these tools are for is for connecting you to your students. So don't worry about making them perfect. Um, even if you just start with the most basic Canvas Studio <laughs> video where you tell your online students, hi, I'm your professor. Um, I love my cats and the Red Sox. That's great. That's wonderful. It's a great place to start. And making videos for your students is always better than not making videos for your students. And I am here to help you as you need it. I would love to help you um, along with your academic ITCs. Um, and if you don't remember who I am, you can always submit a help ticket to Six Tech, and that will probably come to me or um, another ITC, Mika Davis, and my, co my co colleague in our unit. Um, and I did want to let you all know that we do have a video production suite if you do want to dabble in more professional looking videos um, over at 1100 West Market, and that is open. Right now, we are taking reservations. Um, we have a YouTube channel. We have loads of example videos on Panopto. Um, and these really, I think we have 258, where the classroom technology team kind of, um, they created a very short example video in every single classroom that was outfitted so that you all could see what it would look like and sound like all of that. So that's a good, a good resource. And then we also have this, um, video platforms document, which um, kind of compares all the features, kind of what I went over just now, kind of as a cheat sheet, and that's available in the six tech knowledge base. And I think I'm sure that um, Sam will share these resources in her follow up email. And that's all I have for you guys. So if we want to go into questions, I am happy to answer those. Okay, thank you so much. I fit it in. <laughs> you did it. I mean, that was a whirlwind, but I found it very helpful. Um, okay. <laughs> I don't know about other people. I was trying to um, kind of keep up by putting in the knowledge base um, ITS pages to things. I put the table in the chat in a second, and I will try to um, have all of those links, like Audrey said, in my follow up email. Um, but uh, Ben did ask uh, about sending us or if you know of any links with directions of um, Zoom and Panopto in Canvas. Um, so I sent, like I said, if, they, if it's on the ITS knowledge base page, um, which I think it is, I sent those in the chat. Okay. But uh, specifically talking about it within Canvas. Yeah, so we do actually have on our um, ITS Learning Technology YouTube page, we have an entire playlist um, for Panopto, which does include all, all of the videos, and it's all based on what we use here at UNCG, including Canvas. Um, and the same thing with Zoom. So we have... Um, we have tons of videos on here that you guys can use. And also the knowledge base is always a, a great tool. So you can just come to Six Tech um, and you can search for Zoom um, in the knowledge base and you'll get you know different links for the articles that we have. So yeah, we have all that. But also we're here to help provide one-on-one -on -one support if you need it. Yeah, I, Audrey, thanks very much. Um, I just thought just something, a real basic directions for us uh, people who are not so techy to be able to com you know, use both uh, those platforms together on Zoom. That would be really useful for us, cause it, but also it would be useful for us to send out to our departments and stuff as well. Sure. Do, do you know what I mean? Just yes, a uh, no-brainer direction thing. This is how you do it. Yeah, I think that mind. the... I think that the, the YouTube is your best bet. So okay. these, these videos here, um, we go through exactly 
how to use right. it, how to initiate your account, everything. And it's all, like I said, chunked into shorter videos. <laughs> so, so if you do need to find something specific, you should be able to do that. And I can drop the, um, the link if you didn't already, Sam, in the chat. Thank you. That's wonderful. Great. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Yes. If you don't mind putting that in the chat, I was reminding people that this is, uh, there's another one coming up in this series. If you're interested, um, again, this is all about online learning and innovation in this series. So the next one coming up is digital storytelling tools at night labs, um, with Northwestern, which is an open source, um, digital storytelling tool suite. It's really cool. Um, and that's going to be by Erin Lorimore, our UNCG university archivist. And then she's also doing our next one up in our research and application series, which is more about like research stuff from the libraries it's typically hosted by librarians. Um, and in that one, she'll be talking about oral history metadata synchronizer um, for um, talking about oral histories, if that's something that you're interested in. So um, Audrey did um, drop the link to YouTube. So the webinar, um, the, the link to the webinars is where the sign up forms are. You can sign up for multiple ones at a time. Just a reminder, these are recorded and we send you a link to the recording. So if you can't come to the live session, um, which we understand sometimes you can't, um, uh, there, please still sign up if it's a topic that interests you. Um, so are there any other questions for Audrey? Again, I found this really useful. Okay, good. Um, <laughs> it's so of, much information. <laughs> I know it's a lot, but I think it's really useful to like see them all together and think about yeah. asynchronously or synchronously. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what are you trying to accomplish? Sometimes people get hung up on what's the coolest thing, but that's not necessarily going to be the best thing for what yes. you want to do. And ITCs are great at helping you make those decisions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there are a lot of ITCs here, or they were, um, okay. left, right at 1230. But um, if you don't know who your ac academic ITC is, please let me know. I see some people here from um, HHS, you have Michelle Folkman. Um, if you're in the College of Arts and Sciences, it's Anita Warford. If you're in nursing, it's Joy um, Thomas Pine. Pine. And um, the libraries, you can contact me and I can get you in touch with the right person, but also you could put in a ticket with our UNCG Libraries Discord. Um, and I'm music, Daniel Rice, um, School of Ed, Carla Wilson, and Sandra Bates Hart, and Brian School, Rob Owens, and April Black. Who am I missing? I'm probably missing someone. Anita, maybe? Did you say Anita? I think I said Anita. Anita okay. Warford is College of Arts and Science, if I didn't say that. Um, I don't think I'm missing anyone. If you're not connected to an academic department, uh, then definitely put in a six-step ticket, or you could also email Audrey um, and uh, Mika, who she mentioned. Uh, Audrey's email is in the chat. Um, please let us know if you have any other questions before I end this up. I know we're right after, a little after 1230, if people have other stuff to go to. Yeah. So people are saying thank you. Again, thank you. I found it super useful. <laughs> Okay, great. Great. So, no other questions. Um, I'm going to end the session. Um, and thank you all for coming. Again, remember to sign up for other ones in the series. Let us know what you need. Let Audrey know. Let your ITC know. And see you all soon. Have a great week. Thank you, Audrey. Thank you so much. Bye.